Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, what's up? Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. So we're going to be doing a two part video. So the two parts are going to be talking about tips that I have for you. One for technicians that are working in a nail salon and two technicians that are thinking about renting their own space. So today's video, we're going to be talking about all the tips that I have for you. If you are a technician that's out there working in a nail salon or looking to work in a nail salon, but don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I post new videos, which will be part two, where we'll be discussing the second part about opening your own space or your own little studio and tips that I have for that. So you don't want to miss that. So tap that notification bell. Just, just tap it. Tap it right now. So some of these things I have discussed in the past, so I'm just going to briefly go over that. But I do have some additional tips that I wanted to share with you guys. There's a lot of you out there that are working in a nail salon that I feel that can benefit from these tips because I've encountered so much in working in so many different shops that I just wanted to share that information with you and help you out in any way that I possibly can. So we're going to get into all of that, part one, right now. into the video I just want to take a minute to say that on the community tab of my channel I did post that I am doing my virtual nail course so this is the same course that I was doing live however I found that it was a little difficult to pick a good time for everybody that's just the thing you know what works for me doesn't work for everybody else and I had a lot of people DMing me and messaging me emailing me asking me what am I gonna offer it what am I gonna offer it and unfortunately, because of my schedule, it's not something that I can like continually offer several times throughout the month. I have to just pick random times when it's good for me. So I've decided to bottle it all up and present it to you. So it is the same exact course that I will be doing live. You will get all the educational slides, all the lectures. You will have my voiceover. I'm there with my extra little opinions. On top of the side notes, you will get the demo videos that were given in class, uh, additional practical work, additional assignments. It is a certified course, so you will get a certificate upon completion. So this course right now, I'm running a special. It is a pre-sale. So no, the course is not out fully yet. It will be out in mid-December. So right now, up until the 12th of December, you have to purchase this as a pre-sale for only $100. After the 12th, guys, it will go up to $250. If you are interested in a payment plan, there will be a payment plan. But again, the payment plan is going to be more because it's allowing you to break that payment down into monthly, bi-weekly or whatever payments. So you want to jump on this. I know it seems kind of drastic to just say, okay, I'm going to purchase this course and it's not out yet, but you're saving $150. So it's only $100 right now up until the 12th. All the information is in the description box below. So you want to jump on that before the price goes up. Back to the video. So the first tip that I have for you is one, and I spoke about this before, is making sure that you're picking a good salon to work in. So no, that's not something that you might know from the jump, but if you do your research within the company, check out their website, check out their pricing, see how they're paying, look at the ad when you apply on, let's say Indeed or Instagram, ask them, what is compensation? These are all the things that we wanna make sure that we are picking a good salon for. So I will leave a link above to the video where I break this down more about how to get a salon job and I get into all of that a lot more in depth. But we want to make sure that we're trying to pick or at least aim to pick a good salon location. So I'm just going to briefly go over some of the things that I talked about in that video. So one thing would be making sure that it is near a high traffic area. It is near a shopping mall, a main street, a bus route, a train route. These are all things where people are going to be constantly moving about. If you are right on that main street, that's even better. We don't want to be too far away. I mean, I would say maybe go a block, maybe two tops away from a main busy traffic area. But if you can aim to be on that main area and find a job in a shop there, that's even better because you're going to get all these curious people walking in, the after school kid, after work people, you're going to find all of them. They'll just stumble upon the shop and hopefully stumble upon you. Make sure that you are getting paid the correct percentage. Again, I get into the video that you should be doing a 50-50, a 60-40 somehow. It should be, or is it a salary? Is it hourly? We want to make sure that we're jumping into stuff. Again, as a new nail technician with no customers, I highly recommend trying to get yourself a job where it is hourly, which is going to probably be more like spa-like. But again, that's going to give you better training. 
it's going to give you more money and you're going to just know, okay, I'm going to go in, make my money. And I don't really have to so much worry about building my clientele, especially if you're not going to, you're going to work in a salon or a high end spa. That's not really where you want to build your clientele. Use it as a stepping stone. Use it for educational reasons. Go there, suck it all in, make your money. So now you have something to put on your resume. So then when you want to go to that mom and pop shop, that's, I mean, it seems like a downgrade, but you want to go to that mom and pop shop. I have something on my resume. I have a little bit of experience and now I'm, uh, not maybe so desperate for clients or desperate to try to get that commission. I have some type of experience where now I can kind of work and build my clientele there. So we want to make sure that you're being paid correctly. And again, we want to make sure that we're checking out the area first. Look around the area. Most of the time people go to salons in their own neighborhood. So if you are, <laughs> I'm just going to say, if you are a bougie nail tech, and you want to do bougie nails and bougie nail art and you want to charge. And it's nothing wrong with that. I'm not, not making fun of that by any means. If you want to put yourself up here and say, I want to charge this eventually. I want to be that person. I want to make money. I don't want to just be someone that's in the nail salon and work. Then don't go to a, a area where that's the clientele. Put yourself where you want to be. The goal of every shop is I want to stay here. Unless you literally know I'm just staying here for a couple months and then I'm out. If that's what you are doing, that's fine. But we want to, every shop that we move to, we make strategic moves to know like, okay, this is going to be long term. Something must have happened that makes you leave or whatever. But every shop you choose, you want to make sure that you're choosing it in an area that you would eventually want to stay and build those clientele. Build the people that, it, build your clientele with the people that are in the area. Second tip I have for you is... Do not be intimidated by experienced coworkers. Working with women, it can be a little tricky. Working as a new nail technician, trust me, I have been there. It's very intimidating. You feel the need to be fast. You feel the need to be 100% always correct. You, you just, it, it's very intimidating, especially if you're in a setup where you're right across from someone who's super busy or popular, you're right next to them. Don't be intimidated by your coworkers. You will be slower. You will be less experienced. That's just what it is. But don't worry about it. Don't feel the need to compare your work and your speed to keep up. You're not keeping up with the Kardashians. We are not trying to speed ourselves up, pick up bad habits that other people are doing. Don't worry about how many clients that you have because it will be slow in the beginning and you will build. So don't be intimidated by your coworkers. Stay grounded, stay focused, trust me, do what you have to do. I've been in a shop where they tried to kick me out. These ladies did not like me. They came in, they're like, who is Finch? And she needs to go. And I'm like, I'm going to do what I need to do. I've worked in a day spa where they're like, why are you giving someone a massage like that? Why are you doing all this? Why are you, you don't need to do all that. Tune it out. Just don't listen to the white noise. So just, you have to stay focused and do what you have to do. Do not compare yourself to other coworkers and do your job. And on that note, another tip is don't let others tell you what to do. Do not listen to the haters. Do not, because they're haters for a reason. You are a young male technician or an old experienced technician, whatever you are, you're going to come into this new place. And unfortunately, not everybody's going to want to be a friend. Not everybody's going to be on your side. Not everybody's going to be on your team. And people will not root for you. They want you to fail. Like I said, I was in a shop where I walked in. They saw that I was doing nail art. They saw that I was getting popular. They did not like that. They wanted me to go. I did not listen to what they said. So if you want to go in with how you want to run your business, how you want to be with your customers. My boss used to yell at me, you talk too much. You, you talk too much to your customers. You could be so much faster. And I'm like, no. But because of that, let's fast forward 20 years later. I still see these same girls and we have friendships we have bond because I spoke to them so much in the shop and they're still my customers to this day. If I treated everybody like dollar signs walking in, they probably still wouldn't talk to me. To this day, they would still not be coming to me to do their nails. So we want to make sure that we don't listen to everything everybody says to us, especially the haters. If you are good, you are considered competition. So just again, stay focused, go in, do your job, build your customers, do not quit, do not show them that they will win stay, work, build your clientele. The third tip that I have for you, what was that? I think that was like three things. 
The third tip that I have for you is look, listen, and learn. You are in a shop with everything around you. So when I say look, listen, and learn, pay attention to your coworkers and the ones that are good. You will have somebody that will kind of take you under their wing and say, oh, well, you know, we do this here or you can find this here. You know, we want to kind of befriend those people and get a little bit friendly. I mean, we're not going for drinks after work and stuff, but listen to the ones that are good. You will spot someone who's phony, who's fake, and who just doesn't like you. So we want to just pay attention. Listen to what they have to say. Watch what they do. If you see somebody that is, you're sitting at a shop and you're new and you're not really busy and you see the girl over there, she has all these customers and she's busy. And why is she busy? What is she doing? We're not copying. We're just paying attention. We're taking notes. She, she, she does this. She does this. Okay. Oh, I saw her do that with her brush. Oh, she does this. Pay attention to what the experienced technicians are doing because you will learn. A lot of things you will learn will be from it, will be in a shop. This is why I always suggest at least doing one shop in your whole entire career. You have to, you have to, because you're going to learn so much, whether you stay for a month or six or three years, you will learn so much from other coworkers. So I want to pay attention to the ones that are good at what they do, how they move and so on and so forth. Listen to the customers. We want to pay attention. You get a walk-in, you have someone sitting down, ask them, do you live in the area? Do you always come here? What do you, you know, what do you like? Ask them who they usually go to in the shop or if they say, we just go to anyone or I usually go to this girl, but she's not here today. Pay attention to the customers because again, the people in the area or the people that come to this salon, they're the, they're the ones we're trying to build. We're trying to gain them as my customer. Now, it sounds like shady to say I'm going to steal somebody else's customer, but Listen, this is a dog eat dog world. So it is what it is sometimes. So ask them what they don't like and what they do like. Try to be that technician that's going to fill that void. We want to make sure that we are pleasing customers. It's a lot of times what worked in my favor with the I was in a it was predominantly Spanish. Well, like let's say ninety eight percent. It was just me and another black lady <laughs> and one other Vietnamese girl. Everybody else was Spanish. So sometimes what benefited me was speaking English. That was it. They were like, oh, it's so nice to have a technician that I can talk to. Because sometimes they go to the Asian technicians and then they're not communicating with them or they're just very silent or they're on their phone while they're doing nails. The other women, they, in the shop that I was at, they're Spanish. They don't really, English is their second language. So they thought it was so nice to just be able to come and sit in my chair and have a conversation. That worked in my favor. Listen to what the customers are telling you. They say I like this. You know, I really like the way you shape my nails. Okay. I'm good at shaping. They'll let you also know what you are good at. If you're still at that point where you're not sure what your niche is or what your, your best skill is, you might think it's nail art, but it actually might be something else. It might just be your application. It might be your customer service, the way you keep your desk. So listen to what the customers are telling you. Ask questions. Also, look and learn from the owners. I took in so much information in working in all the shops that I was at, whether I was behind the desk in my earlier years or I was a nail technician, I pay attention to how the owners move. How do they keep their books? Are they using a system? What system is it? This is where I learned about certain systems you know, or software, I should say, that salons use to keep their books. Because in my mind, I was like, I'm always going to own a nail shop. I want to own my own nail salon. So while I'm here working, I can just pay attention to how the boss moves. Where does she get her products from? How do they do wholesale? How do they do this? What does everybody get? Like, is everybody commission or, oh, those girls are salary, but we're commissioned. Just pay attention to how owners move and how they run their business. You can just take some notes for yourself about eventually if you are somebody that wants to go into business for yourself, whether it be a small studio space, a room, whatever, it's still your business. So you want to pay attention to just look at how the owners handle their own business. This will definitely benefit you in becoming your own boss one day. The last tip that I would have for you is keep your friends close and your enemies closer. It just is what it is. It's going to be someone that you just don't like and they're going to talk trash about you. And I'm not wishing this upon anybody, but sometimes working with women, this is just, it is. If you have five women in a room, somebody doesn't like somebody. That's just the reality of it. So we want to keep, keep an eye out for those people. There's always going to be someone, you know, you want to watch your supplies. People are very petty, shady, grimy. They will sab I've had my stuff sabotaged. I've had my stuff stolen. People are funny. So we just want to keep our friends close, our enemies closer, pay attention, do your job, look, listen.
better. So if you guys have any other questions about working in a nail salon, please leave me comments or questions in the description box below. And also everything else that I said in the video about the pre-sale, you can find that below as well. Do not forget to hit like and subscribe. Forget to hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I post for part two where we're going to be talking about some tips that I have for you if you are opening your own salon. I will see you next time. Bye.